I am Jeffrey Rogue Kohut. This is my Potter's Journal for August 2024. I am making 400 little tumblers for a wedding. Okay, lift a glass to the bride and groom. Today, this is a prototype. I will show you how I put the little monogram on it. The M and the N. Once upon a time, I used to get business stamps made. But I'd tell them not to put it on the wood. Well, the days of this for only $20 are gone. Now they only come self-inking. So how do we get it out of there? How do you tell them not to put it in there? Now there is a place that makes stamps for potters. $50 each! And they don't do the artwork. You've got to have that to send to them. So I've taken to the historically accurate way of doing it. The way it was done years ago. The way it's been done for centuries. I took a little piece of clay and I carved an M with a little knife and an N in reverse. Okay, the story's not exactly that easy or that simple. But first, let me show you how I put the monogram on. Okay, let's see what's going on in the studio today. And after drying out by the wheel, loosely covered overnight, we come to the area where we put on the little medallion with the M N. So they come up here by the board full. There's one there, heavily covered. This one is ready to go. Okay, so this board and here's a trick for you. This board is covered top and bottom. Uh, sometimes just covered from the top. It'll dry out from the bottom. If I want to hold them a bit, I will take a mist bottle and spray the bottom of the board. So I'm actually keeping the board damp in order to keep okay the pots damp. I want them to dry out slowly all the way through so that when we put on the medallion, okay yeah, it's uh, consistently dried out, okay, the whole way through, not wet on the top and dry on the bottom or any of the other ways round. And we've got entertainment with a movie running right over our shoulder. I have set myself up in first we'll see if they're round and then the problem is s cracks now I've been just taking and pushing down in cert in the center in a circular motion now if they're a little bit too stiff I've been taking the flat edge of the okay Potter's knife here and pounding down this is uh, an extra attempt okay to avoid s cracks to compact that clay a bit. Now I've um, done my best to cut these cleanly off the wheel but um, I have been going over the bottom with the rib to make it very smooth but really what I'm doing here is once again compacting the bottom hoping that we'll avoid any S cracks and these were made to be untrimmed uh, to keep the price down but I do go once around quite often I don't always have to with the rubber rib. <coughs> and once with the sponge, okay, smooth that off, and again over the bottom, smoothing and hopefully compacting it to prevent um, cracks. When I lifted it off the wheel, I um, when I set them down, okay, you could get little fingerprints in there, but when I set it down, I go like that to hopefully smooth them out. There still may be a little bit of rough. <coughs> So I'll go over it with my thumb, making sure we're round here. And then when I put the wavy on there, I don't know if that can be seen because it's a 
black slip, or a dark slip on a light clay. Sometimes it shows where it meets up. So that is where I put the little medallion. Okay, and I just put a little bit of slip. That the pots are still um, at the just beginner, the stiffening up part of leather hard, uh, the early stages maybe we'll say. Okay, a little pinch of clay that's maybe about the size of a small jelly bean and actually I shape it like a jelly bean and flatten it out just a bit and place it on where I put the slip and push it in. Okay, I'm supporting it from the inside and I push it in okay in a broad oval because that's the size and shape of the, um, the stamp <coughs> and I don't know the stamp is maybe a huge story um, we need to make sure that it's right side up and I start at one end push it in on the one side come across make sure I'm getting all the letter parts pushed in and then I have to do an extra round on the far side to get the M and N for Monica and the keel. Okay, and then I push it out from the inside because uh, or get it smooth and yeah, even on the inside. Then I go around the outer edge and just okay, an extra time in with my thumb. So I'm really putting a lot of time and effort into these more than I normally would that um, in the past this little and this is a, actually a little bit bigger than the espresso or shot shots or kids tea party cups I normally do I originally invented them to fill in okay unused uh, blank spaces in the kiln between big stuff um, and it was something I made to um, um, you know, I fit a lot in in all the extra spots that people, other people would have wasted in the kiln. And it was something that I made and sold rather cheaply. So, what do you do? And these, I am putting extra effort in. What do you do when somebody says, I want 400 of them, and asks about a price? Actually, that's bigger than, I think, any wholesale order I've ever got. Um, how do you not give them a wholesale price? Well, I had to explain that this is something that I sell very cheaply and that there's not a whole lot I can do on the price. That um, this time I may not be fitting them in the empty spots of the kiln that I will probably be okay doing a kiln almost load entirely made up of these. And the stamp is another story. This um, project did get rushed through the beginning phases faster than um, I would have liked. I was very busy with Slovene Fest, but I would have liked to do done more on the stamp and given them some options. I made the stamp myself which is what you should do, okay, rather than pay fifty dollars for it from a pottery stamp company. <clears throat> and it's not exactly a stamp that you would put in here level and just go straight across. It's kind of, the, the M is on the front and the M actually goes around the side. So you have to learn how to use a very asymmetric stamp. But with um, 400 pots, there's plenty of time, okay, to get this right. And on most of them, I've learned to cut them off the wheel um, so that the wire doesn't give a little V in the bottom of the pot. Occasionally, early on, Okay, it was doing that. I didn't realize what I was doing. So sometimes I need to put a little extra patch of clay in there. Um, that when I was just selling these, okay, 
at, um, at the farm market. I didn't really worry that much about that, that since this was uh, an inexpensive item and is for me. But in this case, okay, I want them all to <laughs> be perfect. And okay, so quite often the wavy line meets up perfect and I can't even tell where it meets up. But the stamp, I made at least half a dozen. Oh, here they are. Here, here, here they are. I tested them. Or I was learning how to use this one. I forget now. And I would have liked to offer the choice, but um, I did some with the MN connected, some with it separate. And I would have liked to offer them the choice, but in the end, there was only one that really, <laughs> that really um, read clearly. But um, I would have liked to have done more with that. Okay, I um, sometimes I don't stamp this right away. I put maybe one, two, three down here, and then get to the stamping because if um, the slip gets on top of the stamp one other detail it then gums up in the stamp and um, okay gives you difficulties so avoiding the s crack thing hopefully that in the past I've lost <coughs> maybe 15 or 20 percent due to that hopefully this will bring that number down that because they're thrown off the hump, if I had a, it, it's still more efficient um, losing maybe 20%. Uh, it usually is known and happens in the um, drying stage between, um, you know, thrown and greenware. So this, the clay I completely um, can recycle, can reclaim. And these then will go to, okay, a drying bench where I will allow them to dry out slowly. Um, the clay that I'm doing this patch on so that this doesn't pop off. Um, I'm really pushing it on here over the whole area, spreading it out to handle the whole area. And then after I stamp it, okay, I come down and go all the way around the end. Now, whether this is necessary or not, it seems a smart precaution. I, I haven't lost one yet or at least on the first batch. So my stamp goes in straight up and down and then I have to bring it up so it doesn't slant down and then I have to turn it on its side to get the M and N. Okay, showing proper. And, and I did show them my JK stamp. Um, my potter stamp and said that it's going to be, you know, it's uh, going to be a fanciful monogram, but not with curly cues, but, um, you know, it's going to read more as a design on the pot as opposed to um, the so much, um, yeah, the initials. And that is another one of what will be a total of 15 boards of 30 pots. as far as the eye can see. Hey, now here we go. We'll get the vloggy bit here at the end. Where were we now? Um, oh, the stamps costing, made for specially for potters, $50 each. Do you really think their equipment costs more than ours? Do you really think 
they put more time in it than I put into these. Why can't I get $50 for this and have somebody design the artwork for me? Okay, that's not the way it works. So, okay, now back to the little stamps. Here's an extra little bit. I, um, the, when, when I was first approached with the order, I, I had never thought it was going to be 400 pieces. And I said, well, yeah, there's plenty of time to do this. And actually, there was plenty of time to do it. But um, um, a few weeks passed, a few weeks passed, and then I got busy with another project, another project. I had, I had, I had 300 of these made, and I had no stamp made. I had no stamp made. And this is the most personal part of the piece. The M and the N for Manika and Nikhil. And... Um, so, so I, I did. I made sure that it was in reverse. So when we stamp it in, reverse image. But then on, uh, I did about six of them. I did about six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. I did some with the M and the N connected, some separate. Um, when I actually put them on, I would have loved to give them a choice. Which which monogram do you like? And I did tell them this could be artistically designed. It's not going to read clearly as an M and N, but maybe going to be more of a design on the piece, uh, which is so much nicer than I'll, um, um, I'll show you here something else in the end. But um, in the end, the only one stamp worked. <laughs> that, um, on one, the um, N was so small, I thought, oh no. I'll get the bride's family in trouble when her initial is like this and when the end is like that. So um, there, there, um, um, it, it did turn out good in the end. So I was happy with it. Um, there, unfortunately, it was only one choice to use. But um, no, this is the way it was done. This is the way it was done in the days. Anybody who looks at old historic pots, they made their own stamps. They didn't go and buy them. Okay, so next we will move on to the fire, bisque firing, the glazing, um, the waxing the bottoms, and we still got to get the glazing. Time is running out. Stop back and see what's going on in the studio next week. <laughs>